Once upon a time, the Galactic Republic united tens of thousands of stars. Once upon a time, an interstellar senate reigned over millennia of peace and tranquility. Until the dissolution war destroyed the star lanes and the high economy. It was a time where each planet found itself isolated and alone. It was a time where chaos and anarchy ripped apart civilization. Now, new leaders are rising, eager for conquest, eager to reunite humanity. Welcome one and all to a new Let's Play series. Welcome to Let's Play Shadow Empire. Right. Oh, Shadow Empire. How to best describe this game? It is a... Well, I suppose the storefront claims it is a strategy game. I'm sort of in agreement. It's, it's more of a logistics management game where you have the option of pursuing strategy and tactics. Advanced tactics, sure, but still. Most of the time, you're trying to figure out how to get your supplies to your troops. So there is that. The game was developed by VR Designs and published by Matrix Games and Slytherin. The uh, link to the, uh, uh, to the game, uh, to the store page on the Matrix Games store uh, will be in the, the doobly-doo. Presumably at some point the game will be launched on Steam, but you know, it's forthcoming, I suppose. I will be playing on version 1.05 in the beta branch uh, patch. Is, this is not a beta build. Just, that's just uh, the current... Um, the current... <laughs> how to best describe it again. Uh, as I understand it, the developer likes to patch things in little bits and then have a huge overhaul at some point. But for the, uh, for the playing this game, we'll be focusing, uh, we'll be staying on this current patch because uh, as much as future patches may uh, big stuff, usually some things I just cannot implement into a new into a game. And I would, I would have to restart. So, uh, we'll stick to this for now. And if we find any bugs, we'll just have to live with it. It shouldn't matter all that much, though. Uh, I also would like to thank Das Tactic, White Star, Tutuku Power, and Lachius, whose uh, playthroughs I've been watching to help fine tune my own playstyle. And if you have any. Uh, but I desire to watch more of this game, I can highly recommend their series. Uh, Dust Tactic even made a uh, tutorial of this game, but it may have been already out of date since there was some slight uh, update uh, to the uh, logistics system. As it will. Alright, let's start a new game. No further preamble needed. Now this first episode we probably will not get further beyond uh, planet generation and maybe some explanation of things. Because you know, there is a lot to be doing done and especially if this is your first game playing, I recommend having the manual open on the other screen. Just so you can look things up because this, this requires a little bit of a lead in in order to understand and you know if you don't know what you're doing you're likely not gonna get very far but let's start with designing a planet for us to play on uh, we'll start with a small planet and we have the choice out of either a Seth class which is a desert planet Boreas class which is an ice planet Lemos class which is sort of like a desert planet but much colder Cerberus class, which is a lava planet. Diva class, it is kind of like Earth, but much drier. Medusa class, which is... Which has life, 
But it doesn't like you. It really doesn't like you. And then we have the uh, lifeless classes, which is either planetoid, which is small, dry, rocky planetoid, and the moon class, which is even smaller, in case you just want to have a knife fight with the computer. We'll be going for a nice, quiet Siva class. Now, before the game, this is uh, slightly more advanced options you can pick. In case you want to have a slightly different challenge than the usual bits. Like for instance, say you, you would only like to play on a planetoid, but would you really like some alien life? Then you could turn this option on, for instance. I have not tried that so far. I don't know if it would be good. I'm just saying you could do it. Anyway, this is just some additional modifiers you could apply uh, for the display through. We are not going to do that. All right, generation. All right, so we're going to have detailed planet generation because I kind of want to show it off. We'll have complete fog of war, so I will have no idea where anything is, what the planet looks like, where my just possible opponents are. We'll just have the one human player, that's me. Uh, we can have up to four human players with the uh, play by email option. We'll have only a single zone at the start. And we'll start with only militia, the initial armies. As for story options, I will just leave them all on. So the crime syndicate, corporation, cults, and effects. Uh, you can turn these off if you want. It's really just for flavor. I have not really found that they are too difficult to deal with depending on how much you want to invest. Technology level, uh, we'll start with the bottom level, but basically if you give uh, like higher techs, essentially start with slightly better factories and slightly higher tech enabled, which can make the game faster, but it can also make things tricky because you will need more resources that you might not initially have, depending again on how many zones you have, and how many armors you have, uh, we'll start with normal development speed and only the Supreme Command Council because you need you can start with all eight councils available but I kind of want to pick which ones I have and who is in charge of them and we'll be starting on regular difficulty because that's probably difficult enough especially if if, if it is your first game I really recommend either beginner difficulty because uh, yeah you can just run into some really bad situations if you do not continue on right so planetology we are in an eccentric and slow orbit around a bright yellow d0 star at least i think that's a zero probably a zero we have a gravity of a half earth i guess temperature is 16 on average that's kind of low but fine the planet age is 1.8 billion which is quite young uh, map size, I cannot, I cannot really tell if this is small. It's average, as far as I can tell. Quite a heavy tilt, we'll have some extreme seas. But I think this is probably fine. Moving on to geology. Alright, so... Let's see. Ooh, we have lots of seasons. Alright, so... Uh, every time we uh, click the end turn button, we'll essentially move on to the next season. Uh, there's lots of seasons here, so we'll have to work around some of this. And looks like the Antarctic is the coldest. The summer. Yeah, it's actually perfectly flipped. But yeah, the poles can get quite cold, whereas the tropics can get quite warm. But overall, it looks like a fairly nice planet. Uh, the highest mountain goes quite high, and the deepest seafloor is actually relatively deep. The planet is still geologically active, which means there's a chance of volcanoes and all that. Rainfall is a bit meh, but that should be fine. Wind speed of 1 meters per second is probably fine. Yeah, I'll accept this. Biosphere, alright. What kind of plant life can we have? Um, mm, 
Right, let's re-roll. Let's see, okay, see if we can get something slightly interesting. You're not too worried about uh, the heavy amounts of uh, argon. Yeah, pressure is a little low. Uh, let's try again. Something slightly more interesting. Come on. All right, so quite a bit of uh, nitrogen, a lot of oxygen, way too much oxygen. <laughs> Argon and carbon dioxide. You have the supernit squid, which is an aquatic carnivore. Oxygen breathing. Yep, that's fine. No real hazard, so we can probably do some farming. No alien tissue nutrition. Drops in bush. That's fine. That's fine. Because, of course, I don't know exactly how the planet will look the moment we start the game. Because this is only once the wild planet is created. After the humans have set the planet, it may look a little bit different. Alright, so colonization with 72.7 million people uh, in that year. It's received colonists for quite a few years, which is actually kind of low then. But mostly agriculture, some mining, some a great deal of services. 15 zones have been populated. We can see the history of the planet. The one that's mostly fluff, but it can sort of explain how certain things appear on the planet once we get to it. And then we get to Apocalypse. The dissolution war reached Vorisria Oriana in the year 7988. War consumed all, technology fell to barbaric levels in over a century of warfare and collapse. They were down to 1.2 million people, well 1.3 million really. Um, with some scavengers, some raiders, mostly farmers. And we can see things happened overall. Ooh. These to town all right well that's fine uh i'll accept this outcome all right so now we have a slight overview of what the planet will look like for us all right we are divided over three major regimes and 27 minor regimes so we'll have lots of activity to do let's start the game all right Let's change our regime to Leotopia. With our leader name will be Wise One. And let's change our primary color to yellow and green. Nah, that's too dark. Um I think we'll take a blocked design. Right, let's see if we can find a friendly assemble. Um, yeah, that'll do. Alright, so we are Leotopia. Begin. The great cities were destroyed in the dissolution war. The remainders of humanity dispersed into the wasteland, hiding, scavenging, fighting, trying to scrape out a living trying to survive. The forefathers of a nation were among them. Starvation and structural lack of foodstuffs was the biggest enemy. There was less food than people to feed. How did your ancestors manage to avoid chaos and anarchy in their community? Um, well, that is a question. I'm going for a specific build here, but you can pick anything you like. There is no better or worse option. There's just Slightly more interesting ways to play, perhaps, if you would like. Well, any way you can, want to go, you can go. And you're never married to whatever you pick here. You, you can go whatever path you like. Just keep in mind that whatever you pick here is the initial situation. And if you go against that, then you will upset some people that got you into power and will probably lead to some rebellion. 
but you will figure out how to deal with that, I'm sure. We are going to be promising technological breakthroughs to give hope. The predecessor entity of our nation managed to knit their people in a tight coherent group. How did they manage to do this? They wrote a book of law and enforced it strongly. Around the time your father was born, a rebellion took place against the leaders and principles of our nation. It was a rebellion against... Well, against the authoritarian and dictatorial leader. We're going for the democracy in this case. Get our turn to play. Round one, we suffered no losses, nor made any kills. We have three decisions and 55 reports waiting for us. That's... that's quite a lot. The previous wise one is now buried. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It is now up to you to lead the nation to victory. You are the wise one of Leotopia. Some subjects cheer your ascension, but not all. You will have to hail and address the nation as soon as possible. A new zeitgeist wanders the land. We are entering a time of culture. The effect is your zones will get extra private investment. Current strength of this effect is light. Gain 700 private economy bonus points. In seven turns, the effect of time of culture will come into full force. This is not all that many turns, really, but yeah, it'll do. We gain some stratagems, which we can play. Neat. And nothing else really here to be done. Right, Ascension Speech. The buzz in the street is that you're about to address the nation. For most of the people and leaders of Leotopia, you are still an unknown. They need to know what you plan to do with the newly gained power. The question on everyone's lips is, who will suffer under your reign? Right. Now we are going for democracy. The people. Affirmative. You have given your speech. You made it clear that your sympathies lie with the masses and the old Republican values. Your vision of a reborn Republic left the masses in awe. Yeah. And... One of my factions demands I take a candidate, and I will take it, because right now I don't have yes, a sir, reason not to. That, and I can pick whatever new council or a new organization I want. Now, you can pick anything, and there's many different stars you can decide to want to, or none at all, if you want. Uh, like, for instance, the Economic Council, the Military Research Council at the start, could be a strong start if you feel like you want uh, better troops or uh, better buildings. To keep the people happy, for instance. Uh, a staff council could also be useful if you uh, need to figure out uh, how to make um, orders of battle and all that stuff. Or perhaps you are close to some enemies and want to know what they are doing. The Secret Service could help with that. Same way. You may want a foreign affairs council to talk to the enemies and make them friends. The only councils you probably do not need at the start are the applied science council or the model design council. I mean, there is an argument to be made for the model design council if, in case you start with some really bad units to start with, and you want to remake them. But at the start, that's probably not that high a priority. And the Applied Science Council doesn't really do anything at the start because you really don't have the technology to take advantage of them, so they can wait. I am going to start with the Interior Council because that will allow me to get better people and also get some other stratagems that could be useful. But we'll have to wait until next turn. Welcome in command, thank you. There's danger in the zone, I know. Alright, so we start with a couple of militia units. And our Supreme Headquarters. Which deals with all the supply needs that my armies have. We have an asset over here. Which is a dome farm. We also have a regular farm because then we can see that in the help menu over here. The game recommends the Terran Plants Open Sky Farming as the farming method. Which is fine, uh, that usually just takes a lot of water, but cons uh, considering that these particular things are uh, private uh, industry rather than, or private economy rather than public, that's not really a concern of mine. 
All right, so we are currently surrounded by uh, mostly flat land, agricultural, which gives us some minor debuffs. But overall, it's not that dangerous. The farmland even extended outside of my uh, realm. Neat. There's also some forests. It gives us some more problems, but it should be fine. We also have one road leading out, which is likely where we'll find someone else. In particular, we'll find another uh, nation, which is a minor, I think. Yeah, minor regime. Off to this way. There is a minor regime to the north of us, and there's some non aligned forces to this way. Cool. Alright, let's start with the basics. How long do we have? 10 minutes. Alright, so for the purposes of this let's play, I'm gonna extend the episode to 30 minutes because we have a lot of ground to cover and some turns can go really slowly. My apologies, but yeah, you know, that's just the way it is. Alright, let's start with the basic resources at our command. Food, water, fuel, ammunition, metals, industrial points, energy, uh, radioactives, recruits, colonists, rare metals, machines, and high-tech parts. All of these are something you will need at some point or another. Some are quite obvious, of course. Everyone needs food, everyone needs to eat. This in particular is food that you produce for the state. So basically what you use to feed your troops. It can also be used to feed your towns, but ideally you want the towns to be self-sufficient in that regard. You may not always be able to do that, in which case you may need to give some of your food to them. Water is something you can either mine from ice mines like uh, this over here, or in this case we probably have rainfall that we collect. Uh, it's partially why I wanted to see a class planet because kind of nice. Now we are somewhere in the middle of the map I think. Based on the temperature here, we are probably somewhat equatorial. So we should have decent enough yields for our farms. And at the moment we have positive food, which is nice. But that's food that we're getting from our uh, private farm, which is, you know, fine. But it's not ideal. Uh, fuel is basically what we need to move things around, like, for instance, the transport you see over here. Ammunition is what all my uh, units use to shoot stuff. Self-explanatory, really. And at the moment, my militia forces are also in charge of uh, making ammunition. Metals we get from scavenging at the moment, I think. Yeah, we have a scavenge site over here. A decent enough size. We also have another runes over here, which is quite good. We'll want that under our control. Metals are your basic building material, which you'll need for just about anything you make. Either from units to buildings. Um, well, actually, that's just basically the two things. As well as uh, rail, when you, once you get to that. Which we can actually already build, because we have that technology, which we'll get to in a moment. But that's not really important right now, because while we will need them for logistics later, right now we can suffice with the transport hub, which is currently still under the control of the private economy. I say currently, because we will be nationalizing it, because I will need that. Uh, let's see, industrial points is sort of um, basically the labor, machinery and technology you use to build stuff. It's, it's a bit of an abstract notion, but essentially this is what you need to turn the metals into something useful. And this is produced somehow, I don't know. I think that's just the base amount you get and delivered from zone. So our zone produces. Yeah, it's just produced by zones. Hmm. Something 
to do with the service tax. Well, I, that's that's an aspect I've not really figured out, but regardless, we'll be improving on that later. Then there's the power, the energy. This is uh, you. Most of your buildings require energy to function, and later on, you also get laser and plasma weaponry, which will also require power. Radioactive is a way to use. Uh, this is a way to make weapons and power as well. Later on, but right now it's not important. As we have no mines where we can get them and we need to find them. Recruits, basically, yeah, people you recruit on the population will become your soldiers. You will need to feed them, so make sure that this number doesn't get too big or too small. Colonists, essentially, once a zero, if you get a lot large bits of land on your control you may want to establish a new city there in order to uh, administer that new piece of land because eventually the territory will just become too big for any one zone to handle and which causes administrative, stra administ administrative strain which causes the effectiveness of all the things in that zone to go down and it can Go down quite drastically if you don't pay attention to it. Not to mention it will make your governance upset. Rare metals are something you need for more advanced technologies and at the moment we don't really need them but they could be useful at the moment if you want money because they are quite valuable as they are rare. Machinery is something we again need for slightly more advanced tech and also for the creation of certain buildings but at the moment we are probably fine without mostly the... We can make some ourselves, I think. No, not yet, because we need... We need a factory for that, or industry for that. That's fine though. And high-tech parts. This is when you get really in the advanced tech stuff. But right now we are not there yet. Now, here's the brief overview of all the profiles. You can mouse over these to see what you will get for... Uh, getting it up to a certain level. Now, for the purposes of this playthrough, I want to stick as much as possible to the things I picked at the start. This will not be totally easy because occasionally you will have to pick something that you don't want for political reasons or because the option just isn't available to pick anything else. It's important to figure out how these things interplay. For instance, if I raise my democracy, it will lower the amount of uh, autocracy I have, or it suppresses the amount of autocracy I have. In turn, autocracy suppresses meritocracy, and meritocracy suppresses democracy. Now, this does not mean, however, that if my uh, democracy is high, that I can't just immediately jump into uh, autocracy, because if I just raise this number above democracy, it will become the dominant one, and I will have to work hard to press it back down again. Uh, for more serious effects for this, I will uh, have a look at the profiles later, but for now. Uh, this gives us a basic uh, amount of uh, idea of how supportive the uh, militia is. Right now we need the militia to be on our side, because they're basically all the troops we have. And this is basically how much the cults like us. Currently, we have the Church of Syndic active in our area, which is fine. Our zone also has a slight bit of danger, but that's not too unexpected. And the militia is fully in, uh, fully ready to go and already working on uh, mobilizing a new battalion once they have it. Although they don't currently have the manpower for it. That's fine, though. Right, let's see, our main zone is gold. That's fine, I'll I'll keep the names the same, it doesn't matter all that much. Alright, where are we? One and a half minutes. We have not yet moved. Let's move a little bit. At the very least. Move our with some long. Right, here we have Toulouse. Well, I don't know what kind of faction they are, so I don't want to piss them off all that much. Let's see what strategies I have that maybe can help. 
I'd say we got some nation strategies that I don't really want to use because I don't have much political power just yet. Oh, I should probably go over this for moment. In order to affect some difficult things like using strat cards, although you'll need political points for just about anything from raising troops to certain decisions. Political power, uh, political points rather. Generated by the uh, by the Supreme Command Council, as we can see here, they create political power used for basically everything. So you kind of want to build as much of this stuff as you can per turn. We also have fate points. Fate points are slightly nebulous as a concept. But basically, they allow you to do extraordinary things. But they are fairly rare initially. Later on, you can pump them out slightly more easily, but you'll never have a greater deal of them. And how you use them is uh, its entirely up to you. All right. And I think that'll uh, do for uh, an opening episode. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.